Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Your discretion is advised. It is time for Radical Comet of the Year 2020. I have went through all the gold medal comets, and I've made a choice. One of these gold medalists will ascend to the platinum medal level and be recognized as the very best comet left on my channel in the year 2020. But before we get to that, I am not going to leave out the two runner-ups to the platinum medal. You two got very, very, very close. The first runner-up is Rusty Shackelford. Honestly, I don't think it is entirely necessary for a YouTuber to have to respond to their audience. However, it helps and says a lot when a YouTuber takes time to respond to comments. I wouldn't lose respect if I post a comment on a video and the YouTuber doesn't respond, but I will definitely give a lot more respect and time to the YouTuber that does. My issue with some of these YouTubers is that they expect support from their audiences while also locking responses and Q&As behind freaking paywalls. If you want people to take time out of their day to watch your videos, subscribe to your channel, etc., the least you can do is respond to them, not lock the response behind a Patreon, PayPal, or stupid YouTube membership. Some of these YouTubers seems to have a take and take mindset where they just keep taking away from their audience. This mentality contradicts their purpose of their channel, which some claim is to share their love and passion, which is evident by the push of Patreon, PayPal, and YouTube memberships, and it's sad to say that people are caught up with the words of these YouTubers rather than their actions. Hell, I think even some of these YouTubers are caught up with their own words to the point they fail to see how their actions contradict everything they say. It's even more sickening when they justify such behavior by making claims such as, I'm doing a service by providing all of you content. If I wanted to hear an opinion of a game or learn new details of an upcoming game, I can do that by going to a gaming website, which many YouTubers steal from anyway, that offers, that offers that content for free, or check in with a friend who will also do it for free. They get the views, they get the likes, they get the subscribers, which leads to a boost of their channels that will bring money for them through monetization, while all people get is a perspective? So are they really giving their audience anything? Again, I don't think it's necessary for YouTubers to respond to comments. It's nice if they do. But if you are a YouTuber who expects and pushes people to watch and like your videos as well as subscribe to your channel, which will eventually bring money through monetization, the least you can do in your part is respond to people. Thank you very much, Rusty Shackleford. The second runner-up is Logi. The second runner-up to Comet of the Year is Logi. He Kikomori, it's Japanese, He Kikomori, is a word that basically describes shut-ins in Japan. It can obviously be used to refer to people in other countries, but it comes from Japan and the phenomenon is fairly pervasive there. People who grow up and can't cope with the pressures of the outside world, and so they simply stay at home. A word that usually describes Hikikomori is neat, or no experience, education, or training. It's a terrible social issue in Japan and in many other countries. I can get the kek factor of using hikokomori to ironically describe one's own activities. You know, hiding in your room, playing video games, I get it. I think it's a questionable thing to label your channel that, though, simply because of the overwhelmingly negative baggage of the word. But hey, People name their channels all sorts of messed up stuff for the lulls. I'm not going to go in hard on Hikukamori Media. I don't know him. Also, it's not like what he does is unique. Plenty of people online have tried to develop, let's just say, these kinds of entertaining persona that are on display exclusively when they're on camera. But it's tiring. It's tiring to watch. 
and it surely must be tiring for them. I can see how getting $100, $200, maybe more, from e-begging might seem like an incredible bonanza of money depending on your age slash situation. It's just money. Money come, money go. If it is changing how you act as a person, you're debasing yourself. Also, it changes how you approach your online content. At first, I think the vast majority of people get into streaming slash video making with big dreams and a feeling of wanting to be part of the community, building their own name up, etc. But when you start holding out your hand, things start changing. It's no longer about wanting to be a part of something. Suddenly, you feel like you're underappreciated. You feel taken advantage of. Why should I put in this much effort if I don't get rewarded for it? Personally, I think if a content creator is thinking along those lines, it is because they have placed too much focus on their hobby. Their work slash life balance is off kilter if they focus more attention on their ability to earn money in the work sphere, the passion and enjoyment they get from content creation will flow from that. It's when people neglect their skill set, neglect their in real life work, and start putting too much focus on their content creation hobby, then their then their output and outlook suffers. You can see it in the eyes of people beholden to their Patreon benefactors slash stream donators. Too long didn't read. I don't condemn HM, but he didn't really express good arguments yet against E Panhandling. He's free to outline them at any point. Thank you so much, Logi. And now it's time for the shiny, shiny platinum medal coming to us from Haddamton Rose. I started with YouTube in 2008, channel Greedland, and have had more than a few channels in my time here. And I can tell you it's changed. Like a man who has been cursed by the wolf, doomed to spend his life forever changed and unable to stop what it has done or change what it has become. It's not just the communities. YouTube is broken. YouTube was made to do fun little videos, but the you in YouTube was lost a long, long time ago. Most of them have turned to Patreon, or they've got bored with it, but stick around because they honestly love the money. Like FlickPick. When he started, he was a goofy kid in his mom's basement talking about Blu-rays. Now, he'd rather do a podcast for his Patreon than make a video for his fans. The people that, if we're being honest, are the only reason he's in the position he's in, going to film premieres and able to do interviews with celebrities. All the old guard who are still around are really where they're at because of their viewers. There were no ads in 07. There was no Patreon. It was, oh, you like my videos? I like making them. Let's chat. Now they've tasted, for lack of a better word, stardom, and they can't go back. They're like Kate on Lost leaving Jack at the airport. Their loved ones yelling at them, we have to go back. But they keep walking away. A lot of them, you can see it on their faces. They don't want to do it anymore. Go back 10 years, and they're all wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. Now they look like they've sold their souls and are now waiting for the end. It's no longer fun or even a hobby for them. It's a job that they have to go to because they are used to a particular way of living and couldn't bear to go back to work a real job. If they had to get real jobs, they'd probably unplug if you get my meaning. Can't use the proper terms because YouTube may delete my comment. So they keep on trucking. Even though the check engine light is on, they bitch about their lack of funds and longing for better lives to people who have had it worse than them and complain when someone points it out to them. They'll say their videos don't get pushed by YouTube. You know if your subs watch all your videos, the bell thing is pointless. Never had a video from a tuber I gave a beaver home about not be in my sub feed. One missing? Go back and like their last 10 videos. Problem solved. They'll complain about the algorithm when their views paid well enough before. 
and they're pulling in the same amount of views as before, if not more, so where's the problem? They'll complain about not getting recommended, but if you binge someone, or even just watch one video, you'll get them suggested to you every day. Their lives are too perfect and need something to complain about. Sold their souls. You see it a lot. You see it on their faces, like you said. These people that started. And what they were happy with was getting 20, 30 views on an upload. Getting a community. Getting some people to talk with about some things. You know, just the happiness of having interaction. Of sharing your love about things. Your hate about things. Sharing your lives with others. Building communities. Building communities, Adamton Rose. What do we see YouTube as now? We see it as a lot of these people that have sold their fucking souls. Sold their fucking souls. Sold their audience right down the river. Hey, go over to my Patreon. Go over to my Patreon. You know, give me some money on Patreon. Hey, you like the show? Go ahead, give me some money in the live stream. People uh, ask me all the time, hey, what's your deal, Rick? What's your deal, right? My deal with these fucking e-baggers is they have lost the respect. Not only just lost respect from their audience, but they have quit respecting their YouTube audience. The minute you start taking fucking donations from somebody for talking about video games, you basically are telling them, I don't respect you. Fuck you. Thank you for the five dollars. Fuck you. Thank you for the ten dollars. Fuck, fuck, fuck you, you and you and you. Thank you for buying me some new video games. Don't buy yourself shit. Fuck you. Oh, I remember you. You were one of my, my earliest subscribers. Oh, well, are you going to donate? That's what I want to know, right? Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by and telling me that you've been with me since the beginning, but I don't have any time to talk to you anymore. I think it's more than that, Hampton Rose. I think it's selling out your audience. Literally, you are selling out your audience. You are shilling for products, but it's not enough. It is never enough. You sell out your audience. You shill for your products now. You're no longer your own person. You have sold your soul to these companies. Hey, Raid Shadow Legends, huh? Go play this game, you fucking stupid idiots. You know, they're paying me, but on top of that, hey, send me some games to play. On top of that, hey, you like that I talk about things? Send me some donations. To me, Adam Tenorosa comes down to respect. Is respecting your audience. Look at this right here, Adam Tenrose. Did you ever think that a YouTube channel would go out of their way to respect your comments to this level? You are the second platinum medalist, Adam Tenrose. That is how much I respect you for this comment. It's about respecting your audience. Don't fucking e-bag. Don't fucking e-bag. Don't leech off your fucking audience, okay? I'm sorry for the F-bombs, but sometimes I just get really kind of into this, right? Now, does it happen to me? Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes, the last thing I want to do is put a lot of time and effort into my uploads. I coast sometimes. You know why? Any of you know why sometimes I take a day off or two or I'm not really into it? It's because it's supposed to be a hobby. YouTube was never meant to be a replacement for a job, for your job. It was never meant to be that. But people are trying to shoehorn it into something it's not meant to be, plain and simple. You see the desperation. You see these people. You see me and these YouTubers. So desperate, so desperate. And you know they can fix it. They can fix their financial problems by, number one, not spending all their money on toys and video games, and number two, having some actual financial responsibility as adults and not e-begging, maybe going out to get a job, you know? It's tough. It's tough for some people to actually hear that. But that is the truth. That is something more and more people need to hear. And you talk about communities. There's multiple communities here, Haddington Rose, but one very vibrant community is a community 
against the liars, against the frauds. A truth community, a common sense community. It's not about anti-e-bagging. It's about pro-common sense. It's about pro-respect. Again, respect your audience. Hampton Rose, I would never ask you for any fucking money. I would never beg money off of you because I respect you as a human, as an individual. Not just because you're a platinum medalist either, but because you come by and you spend your time on the channel. I appreciate that. I don't care if you hit a notification bell, but I know some of you do. I know some of you uh, don't always enjoy what I upload, and that's okay. It's a hobby. Ladies and gentlemen, if, if I want people to know one thing in my time while I'm on YouTube, is to let it be a passionate hobby. And let that be all it is. Unless you can do it and be successful and not sell your soul, not sell out your audience, not sell out to this person, to that person, not become a fucking walking billboard, not become a joke, not become a shadow of who you once were when you got on the platform. Thank you, Haddington Rose. And as promised, here's your shiny, shiny platinum medal with your name engraved right there for all eternity. No one's going to take that away from you. To the runners-up and to everyone else that left amazing comments in 2020, I appreciate your comments. Thank you so much. And I hope this inspires a lot of you to aim for the platinum next year.